was bothering my perfection son, so catch your breath. <laughs> Good evening. I'd like to call this Thursday, January 25th, meeting with the Tacoma School District Board of Directors to order. Please rise and join me for a flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Would General Counsel please call the roll? President Cobb? Here. Mm. Vice President Vial? Here. Director Winskill? Here. And Director Hines? Here. Item number four. Is there a motion to adopt the agenda? I move adoption. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Are there any comments on that motion? Okay, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion is adopted. Item number five, recognition of staff, students, and community. 5.1, recognition of Gold Star Community Partner Award to Julia Hernandez, GPS volunteer. Good evening. I'm Amanda Scott Thomas, the Director of Community Partnership Office, and it's uh, my pleasure to be with uh, you all here today. So thank you, Board of Directors. Um, I am here to celebrate uh, some community partnerships with the Gold Star Award. We have two partnerships to recognize tonight. Um, we weren't with you in December, um, so we're gonna be recognizing our December uh, Gold Star Community Partner, and we're going to be um, recognizing our January um, community partner. So for uh, the month of December, or uh, actually the month of December, we're going to be uh, celebrating uh, Julia Hernandez. Um, the Partnership Award was established to recognize that partnerships between communities and schools is very important, and partners are committed to supporting student success and the success of the whole child. We know that our partners in our community invest in the education of our young people, um, that our youth whose future in turn will affect the quality of life in our entire Tacoma community. So for your recognition today, um, we want to talk to you about Julia Hernandez. Uh, it was in 2014 that to Tacoma Public Schools hosted its first Family and Community Learning Academy at McCarver Elementary School. It was my first year at TPS. It was an exciting year. We did this in partnership with the P Peace Community Center and the Tacoma Housing Authority. Tacoma Public Schools uh, Family and Learning Community Academy is a free event open to the entire community. It provides educational and informational sessions for parents from all backgrounds to help sharpen their skills and assisting their children to succeed in school. It's something that we do uh, to this day. And Julia uh, joined the original design team and helped create the Family and Community Learning Academy. It was done uh, in collaboration with our community. She has volunteered and was a volunteer leader at every uh, annual FCLA since 2014. And Julia not only volunteered herself, but she bought, bought her entire family with her. Julia's sons and even her husbands engaged in the hard work of pulling off a community event. Julia has assisted in every aspect of the event from planning it, setting up to take down, doing outreach, as well as offering her expertise and experience uh, with parents parents by assisting in sessions uh, and translating when necessary. Over the years, she's uh, specifically provided a lot of support to our Spanish-speaking families. Uh, when the partnership office calls, Julia answers. Uh, and she continues to uh, answer, and we appreciate her commitment, her passion, and her continued support to, the, to our community and to our students and the families here with Tacoma Public Schools. And today, we just wanted to invite Julia to be recognized and honor her for her volunteerism. So would you give her a hand, please? this privilege to work for the Tacoma School District. 
Um, I've met Ms. Toro, um, Carla, uh, a long time ago when I was at Geodrome working with the ISS students. Mm -hmm. And um, through my time here with the Tacoma School District, it's just been a privilege to see a lot of my kids graduate, go to college, mm -hmm. and just, you know, just have that experience that I can be of help to those, you know, in need. And so I thank all you guys for the privilege to be here. And, you know, I just hope I can keep on being a difference for our community. Thank you. Item number 5.2, Recognition of Gold Star Community Partner Award to Office Depot. Awesome. All right, Committed to Learning is more than a slogan for Office Depot. It's a pledge that they bring to, to life in every community, uh, in local communities across the country. Steve Calkins, the Executive uh, President and Business Solutions Division for Office Depot says that together with our partners, we are listening, learning, and enabling students' success in school districts across the country. Not many people know that Office Depot has a whole education division and they really do support local schools. It was in 2017 that our a local office depot on 19th and Union uh, partnered with Tacoma Public Schools a partnership office in the Department of Early Learning to host two in-store interactive uh, early learning events serving about 100 uh, Tacoma Public School families. The purpose of the event was to provide uh, opportunities for pre-K uh, through fifth grade TPS students and families to learn together in community. So at the store, um, Office Depot has a whole line of educational products and we use a few of those in our learning um, events or the learning stations such as the sprouting castles um, we did a sprouting castle uh, activity where they made castles it was a science and engineering focused uh, session we did painting rocks so we did a little art there we did math sticks and Jack and the Beanstalk. Uh, we did more math, we did some robotics, uh, and then uh, technology and color. So we had, the, the kids had fun with tablets. So it was uh, STEAM uh, focused events uh, where we were able to bring community partners together to facilitate the day. It was a lot of fun. Children and parents left with a certificate of completion from Office Depot. We had goodie bags and a booklet containing fun STEM activities that they could do together at home. And it's with sincere thanks that we present uh, our Gold Star Community Partner Award to Office Depot, Depot um, and we look forward to uh, partnering with them for more events in 2018. So we have Anthony, um, who is here from Store 894. Let's welcome him. Uh, well, wow, what an, uh, uh, an honor serving this community. Um, it's a great pr uh, privilege of mine to, to work with the Tacoma School Districts, and I thank you for this. It's very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank both of our um, community partners. It's just great to have such. Um, so it's great that our community just wraps around our kids. So we just really appreciate both of you. So moving on to item number six, members of the public wishing to address the board. School board members encourage public participation. Your input is appreciated. If you would like to address the school board, please follow these steps. First, complete a citizen's request to speak card, which is located at the back of the auditorium. Submit the card to the school board secretary prior to the start of the meeting. Cards submitted after the public comment period has ended will not be considered at this session. The superintendent will call your name when it's your turn to address the board. Please speak into the microphone. You will have up to three minutes to share your comments and you'll get a one minute warning. There are no citizens that have requested to speak today. That happened last time too. You get all the way to the end and you feel like, okay, we're gonna get the comments. Well, thank you. Get only in piece of paper. 
Item number seven, the superintendent's report, and tonight we have a legislative update. So this is just a brief report to uh, the board and to our public. The legislature is in its third week of, the, of this 2018 legislative session. The session is scheduled to last 60 days and the, to adjourn on March 8th. And uh, so indications so far is that they're gonna complete, complete their work uh, by this date and not do any extra sessions. Um, if you think about the legislative, I know she laughed. We may have to laugh about that, but that's our plan. <laughs> the legislative agenda put forward by Tacoma, we feel like is really being addressed, especially the following items. One, local levy reform proposals are contained in at least five different bills, and all the suggested changes would be beneficial to the district. Uh, another bill, 6483, which, which was introduced by Senator Conway and co-sponsored by Senator Darnell, addresses the shortfall in special education funding from the state. It would increase the special, edu special education funding factor to a level that would address the special education funding shortfall in all school districts, including Tacoma School District. So we're really excited about that. There are several bills that address the need for more flexibility in um, in categorical funding through the learning assistance program, LAP and K-3 class size, and the proposed modifications would be helpful to the school district. Uh, the Senate Education Committee um, asked me to come and testify last week, it's been a couple of weeks, at a work session regarding the impacts of the education funding bill, House Bill 2242, and that work session has gone very well. And then the committee also had a hearing on the various education funding bills on Monday, and Roslyn went down and testified. And we also know that Karen has been invited to come down next week uh, to give the board member perspective. So we're well represented, and people are asking us to come and uh, talk about our, our position. Um, the capital budget has been finally adopted and signed into law last week. The bill includes an increase in school construction assistance program funding. And that mm -hmm. even though the funding is still lower than the actual cost of construction, um, the legislature seems like they are at least acknowledging that uh, they know it's a problem and are going to consider addressing it. Mm -hmm. uh, finally, the Senate heard a bill that would allow school districts to transfer birth to age three disabled persons tracking to the Department of Early Learning. So that takes a big burden off of our student services uh, department. Uh, details of the bill are still being worked out between OSPI and the Department of Early Learning and the Governor's Office. Um, our own uh, Assistant Superintendent of Special Services of Student Services, uh, Jennifer Troffler, has really been behind the scenes working on this for a long time, so we appreciate that. Um, there's other bills that address some of our legislative priorities, and uh, hopefully we'll see a few of them make it through the progress process. Uh, but just know we are op we are what do you say cautiously optimistic, good cautiously optimistic about uh, what ha might happen in this <laughs> legislative session. So, thank you. Thank you. Any comments from members of the board? Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to be testifying in House Ways and Means okay. next. Wednesday at 3.30. Okay. Chairman asked for me to come. Be good. Superintendent Santono, do you have any, do you remember, or did you get any questions from the Senate, early learning K-12, or w at which committee was it in? It was the, ways, it was the education it was committee. Was Senate, uh, um, and it was uh, governed by uh, Senator Rolfus, which uh -huh. is Ways and Means also. I got one question. Uh -huh. Ms. Santorno, are you telling us that your graduation rate has gone from 55% to 85%? 86? And I said, yes, sir, it has. <laughs> That's it? <laughs> that, was, that was Senator Madden, by the way. <laughs> that was the only question. That was it. It was great. Okay. Can I ask the follow-up? Um, Ms. Padilla, did you get any questions when you were? Yeah, I had one question on the levy uh, that they asked, just w whether or not our levy uh, request, if we were to receive the $2,500, plus the state's taxes would put us in a situation where taxes would increase or decrease, and it, it's a very moderate um, de reduction in our taxes. Okay, thank you. They actually asked that question, Rosalyn, if you remember, you got, gave them the right number at, the, at your thing, Carla. They asked us that, would our taxes go yes. down and what were the yes. rates, and, did. and we, you know, explained that we also were asking for the tech levy you added that in i think it was about a dollar reduction without the state i think that's what you told them if i remember correctly. without the tech yeah 
Yeah, without the state additional tax. Yes. Yeah. Am I right? That was one, yeah. Yeah, I wasn't, when you referred to a dollar, I wasn't sure what you were getting well, back to. The from state's the portion is about a dollar. Yeah, yeah, from the four down to the, yeah. So that so was, I'm just not tracking well, sorry. That's all right. <laughs> Any other comments? Mm -mm. Nope, okay. So Moving on hearing. to item number eight, the consent agenda. Is there a motion to adopt the consent agenda? I move adoption. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Are there any comments? Hearing none, all those in favor of adopting the consent agenda, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the motion's adopted. And going on to item nine, policy matters. 9.1, second reading and adoption, new policy number 2325, school garden. The general counsel recommends that the board of directors adopt policy 2325, school gardens. This is a new policy. This was a policy that um, the legal department uh, has worked very closely with maintenance and operations. I'd like to recognize Deputy General Counsel Heidi Maynard for her uh, tireless work on this and also really uh, thank you to Michael Knack, our sustainability manager. Both are here tonight and they worked very, very well on this. I think it was nearly uh, not long after I joined us a year ago that uh, Director Hines asked us to look into this in response to public comment. And mm -hmm. this second reading now um, takes into account community feedback, um, board feedback, mm -hmm. um, as well as um, um, additional legal review. I move approval. Second. Are there any comments? I just want to make the comment that a year ago you heard things that we've been hearing them for about four years. So <laughs> this is great to finally get it done. Director Hines? I have one question, and I appreciate all the good work that we've gone into this. Can kids eat what they grow in the garden? Yes. Uh, Deputy General Counsel Heidi Maynard has worked to draft a specific consent form so that if the parent consents, their child may eat. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. Any other comments? All those in favor of adopting um, item number 9.1, uh, policy for school gardens, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is adopted. Yay. Okay. <laughs> item 9.2, second reading and adoption, new policy number 3112, social emotional learning. And the general counsel also recommends that the board of directors adopt policy 3112, social and emotional learning. This is also a new policy, and uh, it, um, this is the second reading, which also incorporates uh, community and board feedback. Um, if there's any additional questions, I know that Deputy Superintendent Garcia is here to support that. I move approval. Second. Any questions or comments from the board? No. Seeing none, all those in favor of adopting the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is adopted. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Just wanted to mirror it back. <laughs> Thank you. Going on to number 10, quarterly financial update. Presentations on the financial health of the district will be made during regular board meetings on a quarterly basis. Monthly financial statements can be found on the district website at tacomaschools.org, then to about and finance. Item 11, curricular in, curriculum and instruction. There are no items tonight. Item 12, business matters. There are also no business matters tonight. And then item number 13, other business, 13.1, approval of grant proposal, social, emotional, and academic development, a student success digital dashboard to the Stewart Foundation. The Deputy Superintendent recommends the Board of Directors approve the submission of the SEED grant proposal in the amount of $200,000 to the Stewart Foundation and, if awarded, approve expenditure of funds according to the accepted guidelines. Funding source, Stewart Foundation. I move approval. Second. Any questions or comments yeah. from the Board? I Director have some. Vial. What exactly is that going to look like? The exact um, design is has not been established and so what well, this I guess what I'm asking what is your thoughts of what that will look like because I, I talked to some of the oh. so it would be a pre-k through 12 uh, digital dashboard that allowed students to archive their work in order to demonstrate mastery in a badging system for social emotional and academic development 
And so students could get a badge for uh, taking an AP class. Mm -hmm. um, students could get a badge for responsible decision making in third grade. And so there'd be a continuum at there. Uh, we are uh, in the works of partnering with Microsoft in new technology to design that. Mm -hmm. A special uh, shout out to Courtney from the grants department, uh, Ryan from the project management office, and several others that have been working on the conceptual designs. We had some conversations with Microsoft recently about uh, new technologies. We They do not know of a school district uh, that has moved in this direction to this comprehensive level. Um, and they acknowledge that we are positioned to do this because we have uh, an extremely um, robust data warehousing system that would allow this. And so the general premise is there is this, um, that um, students would be able to earn badges, um, students would be able to demonstrate what they have learned, um, and students would build both intrinsic and, motiv and extrinsic motivation um, through the, out the mm -hmm. process. Oh, follow-up question mm -hmm. to that. This has been something that's thinking about for a while. Will this help us? Because one thing that's bothered me is I don't see a real nexus now of achievement, the level of achievement to social-emotional growth. I know we think it's there, but I really want to see a quantification or of that about is a student's emotional and social growth raise their academic achievement? And it's something that I've been thinking about for a while because the two need to go together and yet in my mind we haven't coupled them yet mm -hmm. so and I and I'm think I was wondering if this is the beginning of that nexus of that coupling but maybe not I don't know absolutely it is and so the idea of collecting data on students social emotional uh, skill development now mm -hmm. to be very clear this system is designed um, for the students to demonstrate that not for an adult to pass judgment on whether or not they have the skills and then I, I wasn't saying that. Where I, I didn't I, take it that way. I was just and and so then I we want to clarify what I'm looking for. I'm looking probably for what Wallace is looking for, and is social emotional growth improve academic achievement, and can we demonstrate that? And that's where I've not seen that nexus between those two tracks that we are on, mm -hmm. and that's what I'm asking for us to begin to. I mean, we're spending a lot of money on both, and we're seeing results. But I want to, I want to see, I guess, a marriage of those two because that's what we've been talking—one that we can actually see whether or not that actually does that. We did have a limited study, um, and I'm sure it continued this mm -hmm. summer. It was last summer with the Girls and Boys Club, where the University of Washington worked with right. us and had a small-scale study. They looked at both things. They looked at number one was there, it, mm -hmm. you know, and it was a very simple evaluation, but they looked at whether or not the social emotional growth of students were sustained over the summer and did it correspond with their academic That's growth. what I want to know. And, yeah. and, you know, we may do it anyway. People can grow socially and emotionally, maybe not academically, and that's, a, that's something you want to have happen, but hopefully they come together. Yeah. And I guess where I think we can do some seminal research as a school district in doing what we're doing is to develop a tracking and an, an ability to measure that and show that nexus between so that other districts kind of look at us and say, oh, well, why are you doing that? That's not your job. And I've had that comment at CUBE. Someone said to me, well, that's not really your, you know, your thing for social and emotional, that's academic. But I would like to, to see us begin to, as we're building these systems, I mean, it's for the kids, but at the same time to build a framework so that we as a board and we as a community can look at that and as a board in our decision making with as we move forward on this. This platform will accomplish that. Okay, thank you. And when do you think we will see that? I guess that's the other thing I'm curious. It is grant dependent. Okay. So this is the submission, it would be a multi-year grant. And so you would not see the platform out for a potential a couple of years. It's okay, I understand that the design and everything that goes into it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Other questions or comments? Director Winskill. So um, it's really hard to measure social emotional, I think, but um, what we really want is our students to be mature, make good decisions, uh, to grow as uh, individuals. So this whole badge concept I mm -hmm. like, but I'd like to expand that to um, really looking at a lot of issues where they could uh, 
earn badges. You know, like in Boy Scouts, you earn badges. So you could earn a badge because you are in Boy Scouts or Cub Scouts. You could earn a badge mm -hmm. um, because you're on a team at your school. And I think this whole thing with Metro Parks and the school-based teams is a great idea. And um, I really applaud that. Um, actually getting maybe middle school kids to help coach uh, students in elementary would be great. So I think if we really expand the badge um, concept to some of the things that the students are doing um, to enrich their lives would really be great. So I don't know if that is what you're um, thinking is. The proposal includes the opportunity to, for community partners to design badges and to honor what happens outside the traditional classroom as well. Okay, so I want to just make one comment because I've heard this from people who go to the middle schools for um, after school programs. And they say that they'll, one week they'll have a, a, many students in their program, the next week they go somewhere else, the next week they go somewhere else, and they can't sustain the students. So to design a badge where you have like 12 weeks in one program and have follow through, I think would really be um, good. It'd be good for the community partners who come in and it'd be good for the students um, to stick with something, you know, because I think that's a really good um, concept to um, keep with the students. It's an excellent point. The community partners and the schools in the Wallace Grant are mm -hmm. calibrating the definition of dosage mm -hmm. and how much time students have to be in a program before they can count it at the elementary level um, to measure the effectiveness of social emotional learning. And so these grants will uh, help build upon each other, but uh, Director Winskill, yes, the clarity of definitions will need to be established as part of this work for each of the badges, including things like dosage. Okay, thanks. Dr. Hines? Yeah, I just offer, I, I think the value in social emotional learning is those skills that we want kids to leave school with that uh, are not measured on a standardized test like empathy and conflict resolution, uh, especially in a global society, the ability for kids to get along uh, for them to understand that anger is a normal human emotion, but then taking that anger out in a clenched fist on somebody else's nose is not an appropriate way to channel it. Uh, and I think that the academic piece, if we can show even a tangential relationship, uh, I think it's already proven that uh, social-emotional learning is keeping more kids in school. They're coming to class. They're not getting suspended. They're, they're in a better learning position. And um, the causation, I think, over time may bear out, but uh, I appreciate that we're truly trying to educate the whole child. And it was, to Director Vial's comment, early on, uh, mm -hmm. I remember us having that conversation as a board. Is it our role to help kids learn these skills? And I think absolutely in the context of kids coming into our school we have the ability to set the expectation of how they interact with staff and one another and what they're doing out in the community as representatives of the district uh, and this is pioneering work mm -hmm. so we're out there trailblazing and we learn as we go but i think it's important work and i appreciate that we continue to look for opportunities to fine-tune and expand and get better um, I saw the student board members yeah. will take lots of notes on this, so be, if either of you have comments, I'd love to hear um, them. Is there some kind of like incentive um, for the older kids to engage in this? We believe there's numerous incentives, but one of them is, is to create a, um, a digital portfolio. So when students transition to whether it's career, uh, they would be able to have a digital portfolio demonstrating of different um, certifications and evidences that have been calibrated to um, better position them and to compete for jobs. Uh, if they were transitioning into higher education, uh, it would naturally serve as a way to support their application by showing uh, these are the wares I've demonstrated proficiency. Um, and we believe that a more comprehensive approach, pre-K through 12, will ultimately make them more competitive mm -hmm. to their peers who may be doing things with just words um, in a traditional resume and not have the same level of evidence. We believe to build on some of the other ideas that there's tremendous opportunities for even uh, the business world to engage in industrial certifications where students uh, could demonstrate that learning outside of their work, a badge for a career or a job, a summer job, mm -hmm. all those different opportunities. So we're, um, I'm sure there's more there, but those are some of the initial thoughts. So will it be something that's not required? It'll be uh, just kind of like a resource for them? 
that is what we are positioning it as right now, is, okay. is that this would be a platform that students would choose to engage in, um, that there is no, um, not a thought of a requirement to participate. Now, there may be a lot of requirements naturally. Um, for example, uh, I'm required to uh, pass my classes. I may get a badge for some of them. I just was writing down I think it's a really good idea um, the whole badge thing because I feel like kids like if they're rewarded with things or if they see that they're like people are like recognizing the good things that they do in their classes or like um, if it's like whether it's AP classes or like um, the accomplishments that they do and it helps them like you said like um, certain things like career paths and stuff I think that's a great idea and if we're successful, we will be able to allow students to pick to choose who they want to share when they receive those badges. And so there's an opportunity to automatically notify a mentor, uh, a grandma, um, a, a, another friend, and so that that recognition can be supported by their network as well. I have a couple of questions and a couple of comments. With the badge system, um, I assume, and maybe I'm wrong, that only students and maybe staff see which badges students have and haven't earned or what their badge collection looks like. Who has access to see individual students' badges? So the, it, the, the, the correct answer is that has not been defined by the permissions mm -hmm. yet. Okay. And so there will have to be discussions around there. The, uh, the parent guardian oh, yeah. would have access to that information. But uh, our dream is, is to allow a student and a family to define a support network that can encourage, as well as um, the student can share their accomplishments with their network. Okay, that makes sense. But not of other students don't have access necessarily to other students' badge collection. No, that has not been a part of our initial thinking okay. at all. Mm -hmm. And then, is there opportunities for customizing the badges that are available, like as far like for school communities to determine as a school community we want to work all work towards a mm -hmm. kind of badge that they've identified. The, improve school culture or climate or just as a school-wide initiative is there flexibility for that the correct answer is it has not been per, uh, <laughs> determined yet the the, uh, the the initial thinking is is that um, that yes um, there could be even school-wide badges that schools earn departments earn with staff and adult badges yeah, that are collected that um, so the first piece is to, to work out the technology and, and determine mm -hmm. what that is mm -hmm. um, there is also the potential and the desire for students to create their own badges and the framework for those badges and be able to share that concept with other students to bring student voice to what kind of badges should be determined. So I guess my more probably broad and more timely question is, is are there students currently engaged in the process of uh, going from concept to reality and determining what this actually looks like in the end? Well, do we plan to engage students in the process? So before we wrote uh, the submission to the grant, we brought in uh, I believe two to three focus groups of students at various age levels to talk to them about what would they want to see. Is this something that would even resonate with you? And we got an over resounding yes. This seems like this would be um, important to us. Things and comments like um, it's important for me to be able to show the adults what I actually know mm. without judgment. Mm -hmm. And so there's a, an opportunity for students to really bring their voice. And so we have done that. We plan to, as we go through beyond the architecture of the actual platform, but more into the design uh, to bring students back into that pieces um, for some of the subtle pieces. We didn't share any pictures with you um, because they are truly just concepts. Thank you. And then my comments, I just want to echo Director Hines' comments about this district's commitment to educating the whole child. And then for the per for the benefit of folks who are maybe at home and haven't had a chance to see the policy that we just adopted related to social emotional learning and who might not be familiar with the social emotional learning framework, I just want to read what the um, five kind of core elements of the framework include. So self-awareness, self-management, self social awareness, relationship skills, and responsible decision making. So these are, as Director Hines said, like parts of development that we do want all students to leave with. And to acknowledge um, Director Bial's comments about measurement, I do think it's great that we're moving forward and measuring what we can and linking growth in one area to growth in the other. 
and we do always keep academic achievement at the forefront, mm -hmm. but we too all know that we might have a child who's knocking it out of the park mm -hmm. in math who has struggles socially. Mm -hmm. So they don't okay. always go hand in hand in terms of the direction of the growth and the student might really need to grow with regard to the relationship skills, but be great taking tests and it can sit through class, but they need to grow in a particular area. So I think it's great that we link what we can and try to show evidence of growth, but also just rem keeping our commitment to, we know the needs of a whole child need to be addressed. I, so. I'd like to clarify that I'm not opposed to the whole yeah. child. I was here when we started it and was one of the main pushers of it. I just want to see us do a measure either, and that goes back to something I talked about here a while ago about looking at qualitative measures versus quantitative yeah. measures. And maybe it comes from uh, setting up one of the better university research offices at Evergreen State College when we had to measure qualitatively academic achievement and growth at that back at that time. And I would just like us to be a leader in that. And uh, I probably have seen whole child more than perhaps others you know, where I worked in, on this. And I, but I would like to also see if there is a tie to that for the future so that that is a, an ability for us to leverage that also in where we are heading and to be a trailblazer. And every job I've mm -hmm. ever had, I've been a trailblazer and not uh, where I see us all to have these opportunities. But, and I think I did say that some kids will grow socially and emotionally and don't academically. I mean, I had a social butterfly who had trouble academically because he was too busy growing socially and emotionally. And, uh, and I think we all know that. But I, I would really, just for our own, as we move forwards, we can say to the community who will ask us, and I have asked, and several people have asked me, does that equate to academic achievement? I said, eventually, I think it does. And I said, you know, but I would like us to be able to draw some conclusions, pro or not. And even if it doesn't, it's like when we went to the you know, our inclusion model for special education, and we've had kids say, this is the first time in my life that I have felt like a normal child. To me, if whether it raised their academic achievement or not, that was something that was a great milestone for us to do. Um, but we also know that now it has raised it, and that's what I'm asking for as we move forward, and if we're designing this platform, if there's something in there that can help us grapple with that and be able to address a child who may be academically growing but not socially and emotionally growing and it'll be in that you know will show us that hopefully in that platform and then we can focus upon that at the same time so that's where I'm coming from and I don't want the impression at all that uh, because that is not the case and I think all of you up here know that yep and the community does so thank you I totally heard that in your comments, and I think your piece about wanting to be a leader on this is great too, because some districts aren't yet at the no. stage where they're supporting, the, where they've they're committed not. that. Exactly. And so everyone's yeah. grappling with how do you measure, and so and if so we can be a leader on that, and, I think and that's And they can great. say to us, well, what does it do? And we can say this, this, and this. Yeah. So that's where I'm at. Yeah. Any other comments on 13.1? Mm -mm. All those in favor of adopting the motion, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion 13.1 is adopted. So moving on to item 14, 14.1, um, annual report on academic excellence. This will be fun. Good evening, President Cobb, members of the board, Superintendent Santorno, Deputy Sweet. Superintendent Garcia. Tonight, Assistant Superintendent Pace and I are here to provide you a report on uh, one of our benchmarks under Academic Excellence Goal 1, and that is the report on the percentage of high school students who have graduated on time, dropped out, or who are continuing. We've seen those blue numbers on the wall behind you, and so tonight we're gonna take you a little bit deeper into that data mm -hmm. and what that data looks like. Mm -hmm. Last year, Tacoma Public Schools exceeded the graduation benchmark goal of 85% by 2020 with a percentage of 86.1%. As was mentioned earlier tonight, our graduation rate has increased nearly 16% in five years. 
16% increase equates to approximately 191 more students graduating from our comprehensive high schools. Our dropout rate continues to decrease over five years. From 2016 to 2017, we saw an additional 1.3% decrease overall of students who dropped out, and that would be equated by that red portion of the bar that says 8.9%. 8.9% is equal to approximately 161 students. We have 5%, which is the yellow portion of that bar by 2017, who are continuing into their fifth year, and that equates to approximately 91 students. So let's take a closer look at our subgroups um, uh, regarding graduation over a four-year period. The following groups have met district, uh, the district goal. Our Asian students at 93.2 are up from last year. Our black students at 85.1% met the goal but decreased by about 0.6%. Our Pacific Islanders at 94.7% are up from last year and making steady increases. Our white students at 88.2% uh, are also up from last year. Um, and and uh, you can see though that our following groups have not um, met the district goal. Our Hispanic students at 80.1%. Uh, a small decrease from last year by 0.8%. Our multi-students, 77.2% uh, are up from last year. And our Native Americans at 70.4%, uh, a decrease of about 5.6% from last year. Going on to our next set of subgroups, our female students uh, at 89.6% exceeded the goal and are also up from last year. Our male students did not meet the goal at 82.8%, but they are up from last year as well. Free and reduced lunch, 80.9%, pretty much the same as last year. Our ELL students, 80.80% 80 up from last year. And our special education students at 59.2% are down about 0.7%. Our key findings, uh, Superintendent uh, Verhar and, and, and myself have covered a lot of this already um, in, as we reviewed the data, but we would like to point out that our Asian, black, and white students continue to graduate at a percentage above the district average at 85%, and specifically our Pacific Islanders increased by 14% and ELL by 16%. So what are some of our next steps? The district and individual high schools continue to refine their systems. They continue get to get better and deeper into who those students are, how do we help them recapture those credits, as well as how do we help students accelerate courses. We are in year two of our alignment efforts around the standards and we continue to provide, fo provide focus support for our teachers through professional development. We also continue to provide professional development around culturally responsive teaching practices. We have our on-site instructional coaching, our new te teacher support, as well as studio learning labs. 11th grade has been the accountability year for the Smarter Balanced State Assessment, and that will change this year for 2018 to 10th grade. So accountability will change from the 11th graders to the 10th graders. Our benchmarks have just been recently updated to reflect that state change. The one additional year will provide more time for our schools to ensure that the appropriate interventions are in place for students who did not meet the SBA requirement in 10th grade. Our data systems, as you heard a little bit about that tonight, continue to be refined and provide on-demand access to real-time data, which is updated hourly. Tomorrow is data day. The DART team under the direction of uh, Director Zeke Edmond are, are launching some new um, data warehouse systems in, so that kids or that teachers can see that data more quickly, much more quickly and more effectively. Mm -hmm. We continue to provide equitable access for all students as a result of our academic acceleration policy, programs, and curriculum that promote strong instructional practices like AVID, College in the High School, and Springboard, just to name a few. 
That concludes our formal presentation tonight. What questions can we answer for you? Director Viola? I've been, I was looking at how much the, uh, the 50 year extended graduation rate has increased. That's, that's pretty impressive from 2013, from 69 to 88 last year. Mm -hmm. And I know that there were some goals that were set by the Graduate Tacoma uh, for that also. And uh, what that tells me is that our kids are motivated that got behind and we're doing a good job of getting them back and Absolutely. getting that completed. So mm -hmm. uh, I think that's significant. When you're looking at the 86 and then an 88 of the mm -hmm. kids. That, I don't know what the end is for that number that maybe you do, I don't see it no, here, but how many of those kids that actually like you said, there were 91 that are continuing, and I don't know what that number was for last year, but. Right, I don't have that with us. We it's okay, uh, that. when we, um, when on these appendices, could you guys list the ends for those again, so then we know what that percentage is. I know we've talked about that sure. before, and just put them in there, how many students that is, because mm -hmm. you, know, you said 191, so if it's another 80 or something, that's mm -hmm. a significant bump in a two year period for graduation for, I think, for us, to, be graduating well over 200 kids in a two-year time frame and um, I think that's kudos to our principals mm -hmm. getting the kids to come back and complete you know their their high school education mm -hmm. right. and um, anyway just you know I think that is a to me that's a pretty significant number a pretty big jump from 2013 as everybody has jumped in mm -hmm. that and that has also yeah so anyway thank you it looks good thank you any other, Director Winsfield? I just have a, a question about the extended um, graduation rate and special ed, and are those um, included in those numbers, the students who can stay in until they're 21? Or is that a different category? A different it, it is, uh, they are considered in the next year, but after that, if they are 21, then they are considered dropouts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they move to dropout status after that extended. I thought we were trying to um, remedy that with um, OSPI or the legislature or something. Are, are we still working on that? We are still working on it. We've made attempts both at the state and national levels um, to, to do that. Um, so we have some work that we're hoping this session can be implemented around funding sources, um, but it, become, it continues to be a challenge. Thank you. Director Hines. Uh, well, first to Director Winsco's um, question. Uh, when I was in D.C. in November, that was a topic that we brought up with the U.S. Department of Education. So we're, uh, we're trying to track it at the state and federal level because you're absolutely right. That's something that needs to be addressed. Um, to the report, uh, ELL, it's a pretty significant mm -hmm. increase. Mm -hmm. Do you have any ideas about what has led to that increase? Uh, there, th there's been uh, lots of effort uh, f from the department in uh, um, providing professional development for e ELL teachers. There's uh, a, a district effort to um, um, certify more ELL teachers and get them better prepared. Um, I just think it's it's a, a lot of effort on the part of everyone to um, really focus in on on quality teaching in the classroom. Um, you know, I don't I, I don't know of anything special about you know what what they're doing except continuing to work hard to provide quality <coughs> education for those students and identifying them and putting them in the right place and. Uh, there's also an effort I know from with Marie and her crew as well to uh, provide the same professional development for ELL students, so the same level of rigor, the same level of quality teaching is expected in those classes. And we just work at it every year and we collaborate more and I think that's the, the end result. Are we seeing a higher retention of ELL students? Retention? I don't know. Less that's a good question. Less ELL students dropping out? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We can bring you back that data in a further yeah, report. I'd, I'd like to see that. Okay. Too. If, um, if I may, one other quick comment. You'll you'll see variance among subgroups. Yes. Sometimes large variance, mm -hmm. um, and that has somewhat to do with the end size on a given year. Mm -hmm. So a portion of the population will be reflected in the end size, um, and so it's not to dismiss that. We we always look at three points of contact going in the similar direction for a trend. And so the power of the ELL stories is you see a pretty significant trend going up. 
the, the uh, and I'm not saying this is the case, but this does explain some of the variance on different subgroups, mm -hmm. such as Native Americans in this. On a given year, the end size may be larger for that adjusted cohort class than it was the previous year. And so, um, or even the reverse, it may be less, and that smaller population has a larger impact on the percentage in that subcategory. The multi-level, too, is another one to look at that kind of follows that same mm -hmm. trend. And multi-ethnic groups, uh, students self-identify. Mm -hmm. And so over the course of the year, that's changed when the, uh, the, the figure uh, regulations change um, and broke it down and packaged a bunch of students together um, in categorized. Uh, they, they identify whether they're Hispanic or they're multi. Thank you. Have, have we been able, um, looking at slides 10 and 11 about dropout, when students do drop out, are we able, I know some of those students we then entice back in, mm -hmm. Oakland, Willie Stewart, other ways mm -hmm. to get them re-engaged. Do we, is there any way for us to make contact with them to better understand why they've dropped out? Mm -hmm. I don't know that we have a, um, a specific format to do that at this point. Um, a lot of times these numbers also reflect students who come back in and out. So yes, no, I, I think the school does a, a, a good job of contacting the student and trying to find out why they suddenly are not coming anymore, why, you know, what are the other services they may be involved in or what we can provide for them. Um, we don't have a specific uh, procedure for that uh, for, for every school, but I know that the schools do a really good job of trying to follow up when they can and trying to coax that student back in. Um, and uh, like I said earlier, these numbers reflect students that could come back in and out of the system. Okay. And I, uh, I think it would be interesting and not even that we are necessarily responsible, but if, there's, if there are partners mm -hmm. to try to mm -hmm. better understand into Director Vial's point of qualitative data, right. uh, you know, the numbers are pretty low. Uh, ninth and tenth grade, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. but I sit here and wonder what compels a ninth or tenth grader to say, I'm done going to school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then students, you know, the numbers tick up in eleventh and twelfth grade, so you are, uh, you're close to graduating. Mm -hmm. Why are you dropping out? As we try to, you know, for us, moving the needle from 55 percent to 85 percent has been significant. Uh, but it's going to get as exponentially more difficult mm -hmm. now, and those are the sorts of students that we're going to yep. really mm -hmm. have to better understand. Why are you leaving Tacoma yep. Public Schools? And is there? And there may be things we can do, and there may be things we can't do. There may be circumstances beyond our control that influence it. But mm -hmm. I would be curious if there's a way that we can begin to try to capture that mm -hmm. and help those kids uh, to remove the barriers or provide services so that they stay in school and graduate. Absolutely especially when they have access to now a world-class education in Tacoma. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, just my last question, I was hoping to see uh, graduation rates by school. Yeah, me too. Do we have that data? Um, yes, we have that data. Um, we're just reporting on the benchmark as it appears in the mm -hmm. uh, strategic plan, so we can certainly yeah. you know, yeah. provide that I would information. Like that yeah. mm -hmm. It'll be available in your hub tomorrow. Oh, at the admin okay. portable, and we will also, it, it's, um, it'll be available to the public tomorrow. Okay, great. And so it'll be on, available online, where they're able to break it down by school as well. Okay, excellent. Thank and you. And region. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. I think part of the answer also to uh, Director Hines' question about, you know, are we asking dropouts? I know if you go to our high school principals mm -hmm. and say, mm -hmm. you know, and they know who they, you know, who they lost, yeah. that they've tracked them so they know mm -hmm. it, at least you know, this one moved to Michigan and, you know, didn't, we couldn't follow up. So yeah. I, I bet if we ask mm -hmm. our high school principals that they have a pretty close rate to why, you know, why students aren't still there. I mean, I mean I've had several conversations I know with Dan Bissett. He can say, ah, lost one today, did this, and that, you know, yeah. and he knows, they know. So I think that we have a better right. record of why they've left. They also use the early warning indicator system. Right. They start that at the ninth grade, so they're actually monitoring students, you know, right away when the, when a certain indicator comes up, if they fail the class or they get a certain number of absences, they are calling that student and they're working with that student and putting a plan together to, to ensure that 
they keep them there. Mm -hmm. They have uh, spreadsheets, the numbers, attempts to contact the family. Um, they track social media. Um, a portion of the students, and you've hit it, and there's diverse reasons for different ones. Mm -hmm. A portion of the students are, um, they don't, we can't find it all. Yeah. A portion of them, uh, as they get older, uh, unfortunately, there is n um, they perceive it as there's not enough time to graduate mm -hmm. for the gap that I need to close. And so you see those sh shifts uh, they may go to a GED program. They may have started employment. And so we, we, we are tracking some of that, but don't bring it to inside the data warehouse yet. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. I just have um, one question, but one comment related to this tracking of students. Mm -hmm. um, I know that there's a piece of legislation introduced this year that would allow mm -hmm. more um, community and technical colleges to grant diplomas. Mm -hmm. And there was some discussion about um, some feedback data to, like, to um, update school districts' student information to reflect that student as a transfer mm -hmm. so that our system mm -hmm. didn't keep it forever, mm -hmm. that they were a dropout, mm -hmm. that there would be kind of that registration of a, mm -hmm. after they finished that degree program, they'd feed back to our, our data systems uh, so as the student not being a dropout anymore. Is is that in addition, uh, uh, you know more than I do, about to the, the high school, for example, that Bates has? In other words, yes, if one of our kids, like then that. it would, okay, so, so they that would, that data would just be back. one of our kids that would be looked at as a transfer or they're not a dropout from TPS re-enrolling at a community mm -hmm. college or a technical college. I don't know where that bill is now, I don't but, either, but related to this topic. Yes. We've advocated that those I students know. are no longer counted as dropout. The bill suggests, uh, it's really, a, yeah. It's one that I, I appreciate is this, when a student has earned the certificate, they are they should be counted. Um, the subtlety, though, is, is that it's still counted against the public school system mm -hmm. as a dropout. Mm -hmm. And so we are advocating that says, um, when the student has completed the work, it doesn't have to count as one of our graduates, but it shouldn't count as one of our, our, our dropouts. Because mm -hmm. the reason why, just so folks know, is, is we really work hard to support the student. And so that means even if they want to go to a community college in a fresh start program and it counts as a dropout, our commitment is to help them be educated, not to worry about the specific number. Yeah. And so our advocacy in that specific bill is, is mm -hmm. um, yes, and remove that from the dropout status. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks for that update. Well, my question about the, the report itself was looking at the trend for Pacific Islander students. I know that these changes are a result of lots of efforts mm -hmm. on everyone's side, the students' effort, the educators' effort, and our community partners' efforts, too. So in the specific case of Pacific Islanders, I heard some whisper about a partnership between the Asian Pacific Cultural Center. So I wonder if anybody can speak to the scope of that partnership and if it is likely impacting these numbers too. I mean, in what way it might be. There's lots of, again, things that are working towards this outcome, but what is that partnership? We have a, a formalized partnership with the Asian Pacific Cultural Center on um, both mentoring and credit retrieval opportunities. Mm -hmm. And so um, they do uh, uh, culturally relevant activities, mentoring, engagement strategies, support systems for Pacific Islander schools predominantly in three of our schools, but they reach schools all over, as well as serve as uh, community advocates to help with case management opportunities, both to bridge uh, what's happening in the school <coughs> as well as what's happening outside the school. In addition to that, they provide summer school opportunities with uh, s some of our hardware and ingenuity. Um, so as the kids are doing and giving back to their community at the Asian Pacific Cultural Center, they're also have an opportunity to work on school work. Um, they track their graduates. Uh, they have uh, <coughs> made very significant <coughs> progress, and we are very thankful to that partnership. Thank you. That's all my comments. Any other comments from the board? Just on the Asian Pacific, the last two years, uh, Lula has asked me to come and talk to their graduates. They do a little after we do graduation ceremony, and I know that uh, I know that Lua makes sure those kids show up and do what what they are supposed. Uh, you know, supposed to do, and, and there's tutoring, there's, uh, anyway, it's a full service, a part of them and what we help them with, and uh, and it's uh, it's been amazing, and they're, you know, really a great partner, and and I've been impressed just going to their little graduation thing, very similar to what we do at TCC with the powwow 
for our daily care mm -hmm. center. So that's maybe I'll get to that. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Great. Okay. Item 15. Thank you for your report. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. Item 15 board comments or reports. Mm -hmm. um, start with Director Vial. Mm -hmm. Comment I have, and Assistant Superintendent for Har and I had the opportunity to go and to your class at FOSS and observe one of the rock star uh, young teachers in, in, in the EL teaching the English language arts program. Pronounce her name for me, huh? will you please? Weechi. Weechi. And uh, Kayla Weechi. And it was a, an amazing class we sat through in the watching of the use of technology in effective instruction. There's no paper in her class. And everything is on the surfaces and in, in technology. And the kids were doing comparisons between Ibsen's Dollhouse and Blood Wedding, which are two um, novels that were written a while ago talking about transformation of women, particularly in society about uh, moving forward. And one, they both, one left husband and dead married for money and found out that was not and became, it was sort of a, a woman's empowerment thing, but the way in which the kids all get, they worked in groups, the class is very informal, the kids are at tables or they're on stools or they're together and they work in, and everything is on the computer. They can, if they get behind a little bit, you can pull that up, your work is all there. They can, they have like a conversation thing where they can share their, their things. And it was just amazing, uh, to me, example of high quality instruction, student engagement, and the really effective use of technology with a, a teacher that knew how to use it. and. You get an opportunity. I know that uh, she said anybody can come visit, and Miss Ness would be glad to have anybody come over and and take a look at it. Um, for me, it's the first time I've had that opportunity to see that real marrying effectively of of technology with with instruction. And her, all of her learning targets, everything are there. The kids see, they know what's going on, and then they had to identify uh, their. They had, to, they had five, I believe it was five questions or four questions to answer, you can correct me, and the questions were about evidence of what conclusions you have drawn, find your evidence, and then back up your, and, and getting into the critical thinking aspects of it, and I know Marie and I both really enjoyed it, and I thank you for taking me along for the ride, and um, it, sometimes we sit up here on the board and we don't get that opportunity to see things in action that we approve, like the technology and, and all the PD that we send our teachers to. And this was 11th grade ID English. And uh, i tell you, I was, I was impressed. I was impressed with, the, with our kids and their engagement. And even the one little kiddo that didn't want to be at so much engaged got engaged. <laughs> and he was, I think he had stayed up too late the night before, but, and it was only about one. And he, she got him engaged and got him moving. So. Student engagement, technology, and equating to high academic performance. So that's my comment, and I was I was really, really privileged to be there, and it was a, just a great opportunity to see see what we do up here translated into action in the classroom. Thank you, Jack. Do you want to go? Uh, uh, I went to the superintendent breakfast this morning, mm -hmm. and uh, one of the sessions I went to was Big Brothers big sisters mm -hmm. and um, the regional director came down and talked to two mm -hmm. different groups and one of the issues that uh, we need to tell our uh, public out there is that they are in desperate need for men especially mm -hmm. they have a lot of women and girls women who will mentor and girls who need mentors but mm -hmm. boys there's lists and uh, hundreds um, that need mm -hmm. that and are asking for it and they right now they're working at McCarver Gray and Baker so mm -hmm. if people are interested and then they do the Boys and Girls Club they do that after school too. So if people are interested, they should call Boys and Girls Club. That's it. Thank you. Dr. Hines? Uh, just to make you all aware, next Saturday, I'll be traveling back to DC as part of NSBA's, well, they used to call it the Federal Relations Network. It's now the Advocacy Institute. Mm -hmm. So a couple of days of conference sessions and then a Tuesday up on the Hill to meet with members of the congressional delegation. So I was happy to see the federal government uh, well, they're funded at least until February 8th, 
When do you which, go? Which uh, <laughs> is two days past when the conference ends. So oh, they, great. they should be open for business uh, while we're there, which is good. Yeah. Yeah. Look at the snow. Yeah. Oh, the, gosh, right. yeah, that yeah, would not be cool. Snow again. So, uh, it would be cool. But then at the February 8th <coughs> meeting, I'll give a report out okay. on how that went. Okay, thank you. I don't have a report tonight, but I just want the public to be aware that the Sammy Open House is this mm -hmm. Saturday. Mm -hmm. That starts at 11 o'clock, so if you're interested in seeing the new Environmental Learning Center, you should bring your family down because it's also um, free entrance to the zoo this day. Mm -hmm. So it's yes. 11 till 2. 11 till 2. Right? And, and I think that I've heard, I don't know if it's true, that the program starts at 11. It okay. starts at 11. The program starts at 11. Okay. Yep. I think you're going to kick it off, aren't you? I think so. I'll be there. Yeah, I will be. So Thanks. please, it's a beautiful building, so it's a great community mm -hmm. asset, so it's all of ours. Awesome. So moving on, item six. Oh, no, student members, do either of you have a report tonight? Okay. Um, I want to add on to what uh, Vice President Vial said. Um, Miss Weichi's class has been uh, a lot different for me this year because she has like couches and yoga balls like you saw <laughs> you can sit on. And the goal is really to just make the students comfortable um, because the, um, the IB English class is, class is really discussion-based. And so you have to be kind of uh, comfortable to um, speak your own ideas. It's not just kind of memorizing things, and I really appreciate <laughs> that. <laughs> um, yeah, and so, and she also implements the technology, and that's really nice because I am very bad at, at technology and using computers, and she uh, helped us learn how to use Office 360, f Office 365, which I didn't know how to use very, very well before, and it's just a really great resource for students, and yeah, I'm just I'm seeing a lot of uh, great things from my teachers this year, and I really appreciate them. Awesome. Okay. I have no comment. No comment. Okay, thank you. So, announcement of future board meetings: Thursday, February eighth at six p.m. We'll meet for a regular business meeting. Thursday, February fifteenth, um, from three to six p.m. We'll be doing interviews of candidates for our open um, position on the board, and then on Friday, February sixteenth from 3 to 4 p.m., the board will meet to debrief the candidate interviews. And that um, will be an executive that session. Oh, sorry, yeah. thank you. That's an executive session. On Thursday, February 27th, 22nd, at 6 p.m., there'll be a regular business meeting. And then Saturday, February 24th, from 9 to noon, at the Tacoma Nature Center, the board will meet for a retreat. Um, moving on to item 17, executive session, and there is no executive session tonight. So that brings us to item 18, the adjournment, meetings adjourned. All right.